Hi, my name is Liz Colton, and I will be doing my communication system video over the Picture Exchange Communication System, otherwise known as PEX. Um, so here is what a PEX book would look like exactly. And PEX was developed for preschool-age children with autism who had no functional, socially acceptable language. Um, and this helped not only build their language and teach language, but teach how to have a conversation, how to communicate exactly in different situations, and just the nature of language. It is actually used for not just preschool-age children with autism, but it's used for all ages and all disabilities where there's a deficit in language. So there are six phases in PECS. And phase one is just like teaching the nature of what, like what is language, like how to communicate. So it's all about just like, I need to exchange and approach to get kind of what I want when someone has it. So for example, phase one would start with just one PEX icon. And so here you can see that there's a ton of stuff in here. It's all stuff that is, we know that our clients will want or need to request for at any point. And this one's specifically food, but we have ones with toys and all different types of things. So with phase one, what you'll, what you'll do is you'll make sure that you're establishing that what you have in your hand is motivating as a communicative partner. So that's a big thing with PEX is you want to make sure it's motivating or else they're not going to be enticed or motivated to use this to speak. So um, say a kid really loves gummy bears and you have gummy bears in your hand and they're like, they want them. They're reaching out for it. So in phase one, you will have someone shadowing behind the client and then someone in front, the communicative partner. You'll have gummy bears in one hand and you will have a closed hand. And when the child is reaching out for the gummy bears in the open hand, the shadow behind will then prompt the client to reach instead, grab the picture and reach out to the closed hand to where the hand will open. Picture will be dropped. Gummy bears immediately reinforced. Um, it's really important in phase one to not open that hand before you know they're reaching out to give it to you because that's kind of prompting them uh, unintentionally. So we want to make sure that they realize, like, I need to exchange, I need to give to receive and to be understood. So with phase two, phase two is all about distance and persistence. So maybe um, once, so once they've mastered phase one, of realizing and making that connection that I am exchanging, I am saying gu gummy bear. It's, it's, it's very similar to saying gummy bear just by speaking. Oh, okay, here you go. Thank you for telling me, you know. So once they have uh, mastered that, they move on to if uh, I, as a communicative partner, was maybe five feet away with the gummy bears not paying attention. So this could happen if their mom is on the phone or maybe the teacher just is turned around with another kid. Um, so that uh, would be just the gummy bear. And it's over there on the table with them. And I'm way over here with the gummy bears. I'm still having my hand um, closed. And I am not opening it until they're reaching to give it to me. And then immediately reinforcing. So next is phase three. And that one is about picture discrimination. So there are subsets in this that we use at my work as well. Um, so the discrimination that we start off with is um, a preferred, highly preferred, and a non-preferred. So, for example, we know that gummy bears are highly preferred. We know a rag is probably not what they want, or maybe a spoon, or maybe a tissue, anything like that. But we have both available in our hands, and we're giving them the choice to discriminate and choose which one do you want. So, they choose rag because they're not discriminating, right? We're still, we're going to give them that rag and we're going to take them through the process so they understand and make that connection. Like, that's not what I wanted. Like, you asked for rag, so here's rag. But that's not what I wanted. So we're going to reset. And then we're going to be like, you want gummy bear. So that's with a preferred and non-preferred. And then it can move to to preferred. 
So say they want, they like chicken and they like gummy bears. So we're gonna have both and we're gonna make sure that they understand what they're discriminating and what they want and they're asking for that. So I have chicken and I have gummy bears. Which one do you want? Well, I want chicken. Okay, here's chicken. Mm, but then they start throwing a tantrum. Then they haven't made that connection of the language. Oh, I didn't mean to ask for chicken. I meant to ask for gummy bears. So that's where the discrimination comes in. And then the next phase is about sentence structure. So that's what we have down here below. We have our sentence strips. And then in there, once they've mastered all the steps before, we will go with the I want. Oh, the I want. And then they can learn how to make a sentence, like grammar is included into that. So we can start with, this is what they're going to ask for. They want gummy bears, I have gummy bears. That's all I have, right? And I know that's what they want. So then they'll start with, oh, I want gummy bears. We're gonna pull off and we're gonna give in that empty hand to the communicative partner. And then we're gonna point. And we're gonna have the child point. I want gummy bears. So they know like how to make a sentence. Like that is the grammatical way to have a conversation in S is saying, I want blank. Um, and then we can move into putting it in the book, having I want and having them scan, which brings us into our next phase, which is responding to what do you want? So this I use a lot with kids who are at this stage um, who maybe have a lot of behaviors because they can't exactly communicate like this is what I want and we can't understand. So this helps a lot with clearing some of that up. What do you want? Well, they have the I want. They know how to make a sentence. They know how to use the I want. And then they can scan through and find exactly what they want. That's why we have so many because we have so many choices of maybe what they need. Um, and then they can choose, this is what I want, and give it. And so this helps a lot with maladaptive behaviors, and then it's also just a normal language that uh, children have with their mom or uh, their friends. So then um, our last phase, phase six, is commenting. So this is when they know sentence structures. Like, they understand, they understand I uh, what do you want, anything like that. And we can start building conversation and having conversation with them. Maybe they want a gummy bear, but I have a huge bag of gummy bears. So I can be like, which color do you want? And they can say, I want a red gummy bear. Or I can be looking out the window with them and I can be like, what do you see? And they can say, I see tree. Like that's where we really have that language built. And I really like text because not only does it build our language, and teach us the nature of how language works for those who don't understand or have the deficits in it. But it also clears up maladaptive behaviors and teaches exactly how a conversation should go. And I've seen kids go from nonverbal to verbal, so it's a very effective AAC.